I've been chopping up and I've been losing water, so there's definitely a leak somewhere. I've got a replacement all built up. I have to take it all back apart again because of this one little wire here. Just make sure, guys, you don't put this on and then you realise that knock sensor and have to do the job again. Just make sure you take this out from this bracket here. How I did it, I put the union jack in first. This is the most important thing. Got everything built back up. These bastards keep falling down. It's the worst job in you could do, man. Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video of mine, thank you. Today I've got our Audi A4 here with the engine coolant light on, the dash, it's losing water. It's not just a sensor, basically, it's, I've been chopping up and I've been losing water, so there's definitely a leak somewhere. So what I've done so far, I've checked this pipe along here, checked it down here, that goes back here, it's fine. I've checked it from there, all the way to there, I don't seem to see any leaks, so... I've checked the top hose down here. I've checked the bottom one down there. There seems to be no leak. So what I'm gonna do is start looking a bit more deeper. First thing I'm gonna do is take off this engine cover. Now I'm gonna remove this pipe along here. I'm going to remove this sensor that goes to the intake flap runner. And then I'm gonna remove this intercooler pipe that goes into the throttle. So I could see underneath, so I could get towards that water pump. So what I see down here so far is after removing these pipes, electronic water pump on these EA888 engines they're all integrated service down water pump so down there I can't show you guys there's like a little puddle and I can see it's just below the water pump so I've chased the water piping all the everything all the way back and I'm gonna start removing these wirings along here now and try to get a bit more access to see a bit more closer to take off this water pump which is most likely the cause where the leaks coming from hopefully on this Audi engine I don't need to take off this manifold I think I should be able to squeeze around it so I'll show you guys what I'm doing as I go So down there guys is the water pump where my hand is over there just underneath this throttle body here so I ain't got no choice guys what I need to do is start removing all the pipe I'm gonna be losing some coolant so what I'm gonna have to do is just pay, basically leave some rugs down there that's all I could do I've got some rugs in there now just there so first pipe I'm going for is this one here I pulled out the pin and then I want to go at the back here so I'm going to take out the top two first and then I got one more at the bottom so once them three pipes are out I'm gonna have a flood but I'll be able to see that water pump clearly the second pipe there's three pipes on this water pump the third one out which is the thermostat at the bottom this with one of these picks lift it upwards yeah that one down there now I'm just gonna pull this one back and that's all my pipes out so all them pipes are all off now so what I want to do now is just move this throttle body so I can gain a bit more access at the back here because I can't see what's behind there and 
we're moving into throttle body is going to give me a bit more access i don't want to pull off this inlet manifold on this generation three i just want to do this water pump without taking off this manifold but i think if i remove this throttle body it's going to give me better access Got four T thirties just along there. See the bolts need to be removed. The T thirties at the back too. Now. now taking off that throttle, I could see a bit more. But let's try to get off this back car around the back there. That drives the balance shaft onto this water pump. Now remove the cover and try to remove that belt. So now I'm removing that back cover. It's got a couple of T30s. I think there's one at the top, one at the bottom. When my hand is going down there, there's one at the bottom, another one for this cover to come off, and then it lifts upwards. For that cover, you got two bolts, one at the top and one at the bottom. I'd recommend you do the bottom one first. And then once you, you take it off, this will just slide, slide away, and come off like that. Okay, so now I can see the belt down. Now we need to take that belt off. I'm just gonna simply Slip it off. See down there guys, I've slipped off that belt off the water pump that drives the balance shaft. All I did, I used the pick first and then I just pushed it off slowly with my hand left and right, left and right and it come. So now I'm going to take off these bolts. the top three out don't forget there's also one more sensor up here that needs to come off if you could take it off last like how I have it comes away and sorry guys I couldn't show you the last two bolts because it was underneath I could barely get my hand in let alone the camera but it's also got that little groove at the back there and I could pull it out now. It's come away. I should be able to pull it through this gap here. Yeah. Okay. I'll just squeeze it through somehow. But that's that. Got this water pump out. Finish cleaning that. Make sure, guys, you definitely get the seal. Make sure you get it off there, sand it off like how I did, and checking that wheel cooler down there if your o ring didn't fall off. So, if it has this, put it on, make sure you get that out and clean that out. Prepare the area so we could put it in. Now, my pump is here today. I've got a replacement all built up. So, and I've also got a union, another union jack as well. And it's a new one with the rings on it. So I'm gonna put that in 
and got everything ready. All you need is basic tools and you need your antifreeze as well. So what the plan is here, guys, is we're going to put it in there first. You see there's a gap there and there. So I'm going to line them dowels up. And at the same time, I want to get this. This is the most important thing. you got to make sure this is in and it aligns with the dowels as well and it's pushed in and everything from there should go good hopefully so I'm going to put a bit of coolant on here and one on that side I'm going to put it in half and half and then hopefully I'm going to squeeze it in so we're going to do that now So what I've done, I've just hand tightened them all down for now, so I could get this belt on. So, half one like that, Got half the belt on, my long ratchet down there, put it under crank, 24mm. Now what I'm going to do, it's ideal if you've got another person here, but if not, what you do it is, you'd have to do a bit of stretching like what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand in here and just spin the crank as I'm spinning it and I'm lift it on. See that guys, I started off by pulling it on a little bit and kept pulling it with my hand at the back here, lifting it as I spun the crank and lifting it all the way till it went over, now it's in place. Just a few pointers guys before I carry on, just want to say that the important part of it was the you putting in the union jack firstly and obviously I didn't show you guys the seal was on the back but what I did was, when I put it in, I made sure before I got it to the little grooves, I pushed it in, I felt it going into the oil cooler, that union jack. So that's how I did it. I put it on the union jack on the pump, and then I shoved it in to the hole, and then I lined it and pushed it in, put in one bolt, and then I carried on. So now I've got the belt on, I've hand tightened down the five bolts, now I'm going to go on. Um, talk them up to nine newton meters and go ahead and put this cover on at the back for this pump, this pulley. I should have been finished by now. I have to take it all back apart again because of this one little wire here. This little wire, it was underneath and it was on here. So what you need to do is make sure you take this out from this bracket here because it only feeds through that little gap there. It's a knock sensor, so just be wary of that, guys. Time to put everything back together.
Okay, guys, got everything built back up. We've uh, throttled in there, all the wiring's back there, all the piping's back as it was. So, all I need to do now, guys, sorry, my battery's gonna die. So, what you need to do is get your 4060 mix for your coolant, put it in there, leave this cap off, let it run two minutes, and top up a bit more. Quick little pointers guys, so whoever goes to do this job, how I did it, I put the union jack in first, squeezed it all the way in, put some coolant in there, then I placed it in, I put it in like that, squeezed it in, and then I felt the, when I was squeezing it to the left to go into the oil cooler, the other side of the union jack, I felt it, like pushed it in all the way, and then I pushed this forward, until the, these two went and sat onto the block and then I fastened it down. One other point I want to give you guys uh, that I've never did a Gen 3, I wasted an hour. It's got a knock sensor, you'll see on the block, it's got a knock sensor coming this way. So that knock sensor, if it's on the bracket, make sure you take it off, take it off from that bracket and bring it back here because when it goes back in, what I did, I made a mistake, it went through the bottom and it wouldn't reach, so what it needs to do is come through this gap here, that knock sensor, so through that gap there, so <coughs> just make sure guys you don't uh, put this on, put the belt on and then you realise that knock sensor, you didn't uh, remove it and have to do the job again, so just bear that in mind guys and any other questions or comments, please ask and i'll sure to call, i'll reply back thank you guys thank you guys for watching my youtube video please don't forget to like and subscribe